In late August, two members of MSU's basketball team were accused of raping a female freshman student. Although no charges were pressed against the two players, the issue has seen significant controversy among basketball fans, MSU students, and local East Lansing residents. On Tuesday, November 2nd, five members of the Coalition Against Sexual Violence were present at the Breslin Center, protesting MSU's first basketball game of the season. MSU senior Mitch Goldsmith, and member of the Coalition Against Sexual Violence, has stated that the Coalition has adopted this issue as a sounding board to talk about a greater climate of sexist harassment on campus. We are here to protest a climate of sexual assault and sexual harassment at Michigan State University, uh, as exemplified on uh, the men's basketball team. The MSU branch of the Coalition Against Sexual Violence has taken up this issue as their main cause. We've seen a culture of victim blaming, of uh, harassment and intimidation of female students, and a climate of approval um, of sexual violence. So we're out here today to protest that. Despite the fact that no further action has been taken on the case against the two MSU basketball players, it appears as if this case will continue to remain on the minds of students and protesters for some time to come. Okay, so you've seen in this video here that uh, I put up, and I want to make it clear before I go on that these athletes weren't charged with anything. They weren't, or I'm sorry, weren't convicted of anything. Uh, the case was dropped for lack of evidence, which leads me to believe that these athletes were victims, possibly, of a false rape accusation. Uh, the question that I want to ask, well, before I ask the question, I want to I voice a concern and kind of give, give a little bit of context. Uh, as heterosexual men, specifically involved in this movement because you know we're in tune to these things, we have more often than not seen a propensity for gay men uh, that are activists in the gay rights movement. You know, this isn't a statement about the totality of homosexual uh, people, but gay men in the gay rights movement have traditionally shown a propensity to ally with feminists, and even on issues that have absolutely nothing to do with, uh, with, with gay issues. And as you see here, uh, in this case, we have what is, I'm going to assume, uh, a gay man defending these rape culture initiatives, which we all know leads to rape shield laws, uh, which harm, in the majority, pretty much exclusively, heterosexual men. Um, and, and, and this isn't something that's rare. I find that the feminist movement and the gay rights movement has a lot of overlap and have consistently, consistently chosen as a movement, as a collective movement, and yes, you can judge the gay rights movement collectively. We're talking about one of the most uh, efficient political machines in the history of, of Western civilization. So yes, uh, I reserve the right to judge them collectively. We have found that historically, the gay rights movement has had a tendency to walk in lockstep on many issues with feminism that are directly harmful to heterosexual men. Again, that's not a conviction of the entire gay population, but it's also a trend that many heterosexual men have taken notice of and can't ignore. Uh, so the question that I want to ask, and this is a serious question, I'm not asking it rhetorically, is um, when you, this, this is a question directed specifically to gay MRAs, uh, when you witness people in the gay rights movement allying with the feminists on issues that harm heterosexual men, will you speak out against it? Will you defend us? I mean, th this is a serious inquiry that, 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 I, that, I, that, I, want, that I want to see addressed because, because I've seen the way that feminists and uh, the gay rights movement can uh, exert uh, tremendous pressure on an individual that doesn't toe the line, so to speak, or someone within their ranks that breaks protocol. I've seen what they can do, and they essentially gang up on them and viciously attack them. Uh, and so when it comes time that you, as a gay MRA, see another gay man within the gay rights movement supporting things like rape culture that we know produces rape crime legislation, uh, that that har that is harmful to men. Will you run the risk uh, of being attacked by the gay rights movement for standing up for us? 
will you openly and in an unafraid and unapologetic fashion tell them that they are wrong, that they are supporting and contributing to misandry, and that they, in fact, are the bigots and hypocrites, uh, and that they deserve to be called out. You know, seeing something like that will have earned my respect, and, and, and I'm certainly not the end-all, be-all, or the arbiter of uh, what it is or what it means to be a men's rights activist or part of the men's movement. But, uh, you know, personally, I'm, personally, I'm raising this question. Will you defend us when uh, it's not easy to do so and when you have no skin in the game, so to speak? Um, because, like I've said before, the majority of victims of the, the vast majority of victims of false rape accusations and false domestic violence accusations and, uh, you know, uh, divorce court abuses are, are heterosexual men. So in an isolated sense, a gay MRA might not have as much uh, of an incentive, even, even if in a grander sense, uh, since it's, it's an attack on men as a whole, you know, it would behoove him to do so. That's all I really got to say.